I'd like to introduce you to Leanne Prater, who is one of our Oklahoma Gardening OBGA ambassadors. Leanne, welcome to Oklahoma Gardening. Now, Leanne is not new to the show because as an ambassador, she's a volunteer with 11 other people from the Stillwater area, and they help us give tours. And Leanne has kind of adapted our formal garden and helped out with that, too, and we appreciate her help. But as a result of her interest in the formal garden, Leanne has kind of started working a little bit with making potpourri, right? Yes. yes. And Leanne is joining us to show how to do that. And we're going to talk first about some of the collection. And you know, Leanne, this goes very hand in hand with some of our topics this year yes. too. But tell us about some of the things that can be used in a potpourri as far as a plant material. Okay, we've got rows, petals and buds and leaves are all real popular in potpourris and when we deadheaded them I just couldn't throw them in the compost pile so <laughs> I took them home and dried them in status and we've got a, a satellite out here gray mm -hmm. and green uh, scented geraniums lemon verbena and a mix of mints here now these things have a specific scents to them pretty much as well as some color right now drying, we can just follow the traditional procedures of hanging them up, let them air hanging dry. Hanging them up, or uh, I don't have a place to hang them, so I take the box top off of uh, copy paper, which everybody knows is the best boxes anyway, <laughs> and I just lay them in there, one layer, and then put them up on the okay. top shelf. Okay, and just make sure they're really dry now. Mm -hmm. We can also use other types of flowers. You found some interesting things here. Why don't you tell me what you've collected? Okay, I've got uh, some curry that had gone to bloom, so I cut it. Um, uh, marigolds, which I've got the little uh, marigolds, plus the big ones that I've taken uh, mm -hmm. the petals off of. A crepe myrtle, which I found real interesting. I've got dried rosemary uh, and purple cone flowers. Okay, and then these are like lilies, and gosh, you've collected uh, day lilies, and what was this one again? Um, the tropical rose. Oh, the canna. Okay. Yeah, which. All right. So yeah. really, the best thing is just experimenting mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Now, when collecting, though, there's some things you wanted to share with us about endangered species. Right. And that. What What are your best recommendations? Um, in? Well, if you don't have a flower garden, or you don't have a friend who wouldn't mind you deadheading their flowers, uh -huh. you could collect along the roadside. Uh, when you go, you want to make sure you take an identification book with you so you know uh, what you're getting. Okay. Um, you don't want to pick anything that you're not familiar with or anything unusual. And for every one you take, make sure you leave at least 10. Right. And the reason for that is the concern of, of people collecting our wildflowers and native plants and us not having any more right. out in the wild. So people have to be very careful. now. Also, there's a listing of endangered species that they wouldn't want to bother with at all. Right. And um, you've, you've also told me poisonous plants, right? Poisonous plants. Um, I think the uh, castor bean is a very beautiful plant, but the leaves and the pods and the seeds right. and everything are very poisonous, so right. you wouldn't and want to put anything like that in We it. have some here at the garden that mm -hmm. are just very aggressive and very beautiful, but they're very poisonous, so that right. people need to be careful. Now, you've also collected seeds and and like these are just peach seeds, peach seeds and cherry, cherry seeds, seeds. Um, these are iris seed pods that I didn't get out and deadheaded mm -hmm. soon enough and so I've got the seeds from those and the pods poppy seeds and then uh, even fruit that drops off prematurely right. you could dry, dry and dehydrate it, it and, and use it well that's that's the biggest part of what we think about in potpourri but as right. I found out today there's a lot much more a lot more to it now that's what right. are some of the other things you want to show us that are called fixatives okay fixatives is what holds the scent of your potpourri for a long time um, we've got two different kinds of allspice here a Mexican and a Jamaican and the difference is just the size of it uh, I've got a cedar chips and this is uh, oak moss, which is very common in a lot of potpourris. <coughs> have cloves, ground, and whole. Orris root, which I found very hard to find. Uh, I had to order it from a company. Now that's a type of iris? Iris, and it's okay. the most common kind of fixative. And, and it's also not our common iris that we're thinking that's about, right. too. So that's why it's so hard to <laughs> that's get. That's right. Uh, we have uh, whole anson. And then if you... 
don't have access to any of these type things, which all spice you can get uh, mm -hmm. in the grocery section. Uh, we also have anson seed, and bay leaves, and coriander seeds, uh, cumin seeds, uh, cinnamon, ground or sticks broken mm -hmm. into pieces. It all makes wonderful fixatives also, plus adds to the scent. So these are it. just some things that they might have in their kitchen already. Right. Now, when you say holding the scent, we're adding one more component to the mix, right. and what would that be? That's the essential oil. Okay, and, and that that's, has to be in there, right? That has to be in there. It can, you can put it on lightly and rely on the scent of your flowers, or if you want it to predominate, you could put a lot in okay. there. Okay, now what would the recipe, and why don't you go ahead and mix some up here, how okay. you would do that? Uh, the basic recipe would be two tablespoons of fixative to two teaspoons of oil. But I'm going to mix up a quart here, which I'm going to use a half a teaspoon of orris root. Okay, which is your fixative. Which is my fixative. And then I'm going to use a quarter teaspoon of oil. And which one are we using? Rose Garden. We're using okay. Rose Garden. All right. That's how it's going. Okay, and then you that just there. mix that up, I guess. Right. And the oils come in varieties of flavors and sizes and. Mm -hmm. Uh, just about anything you want. Well, you can we can get. tell from your little collection there, there's plenty <laughs> to choose from. Yeah, there's Now other you're going to mix that in with what? Uh, already? I've already mixed in uh, rose petals and buds and status. And okay, so that's scented, a quart, right? Yeah, I've okay. mixed in a quart of just different stuff. And then you can start with hand, you can start shake with the it hand, up. Shake it up. Um, if you don't have a large container or a glass bowl, I use these. I okay. use Cool Whip. And, and then I understand before it's really used for display, it needs to store what? Anywhere from three to six weeks? Three to six weeks. Okay. It's covered in a dark place. And I forget about mine quite often, so about once a week I go in and shake it up. Okay. So that's and then when you store it, you need to do it in an airtight container too, right. right? Now, you've got a neat little thing here that you actually prepare so you can give them away or whatever you need to do for gifts. What are you right. going to do with that? Um, we're going to seal it in a, a container like this. and in, the bags vary in whatever different sizes okay. you want. And this is just a seal of meal, this right? This is just a seal of meal. So that's some you've already done. That's I've stored done. for the appropriate time and just pour it in. And I guess one reason that it's so important to make sure it settles because when you're dividing it up, you may not get the right amount of fixative right. and everything in your packaging. So that way it absorbs the smell a little better. Right. Okay. And then. It just has little prongs that it okay. fits on. And does that just seal the air out of it then? Is well, that... it'll have some air in it. Uh, it they do make the... the vacuum ones that will take, take... the okay. air out. And you just, just put it down for it the out. amount of time okay. and mount it on. Well, that's, that's nice. Now, Leanne, I understand that this is probably your favorite resource here. It's Potpourri by Penny Black. Uh -huh. and, uh, you found it in, in a bookstore pretty easily, I guess, pretty and they easily. can order it. Right. Now, the other thing is a lot of these fixatives and things are hard to get, so there's also mail order companies mail. that specialize in this, right. I guess, right? Right, Well, so you can see that a cleanup job in the garden, uh, Leanne has turned into a nice decoration for the home and for future use, and I know you've been sharing some with us and other <laughs> ambassadors, and we're very appreciative. So, Hopefully, you've gotten some good ideas, and Leanne, we appreciate you joining us and sharing them with us. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me.